Tom, and thanks to the delegates and everyone listening. Um, it's awesome to be back, but you know, as you just said, uh, some things have changed. Uh, so just quick intros, I'm Anand Srinivas as the CTO and one of the co-founders at Nyansa. And with me is John Turner. Do you wanna intro yourself quick? Yeah, hey, I'm John Turner, uh, head of customer success for uh, the Nyansa unit over at VMware. Yep, exactly. And now we're, we're both part of uh, VMware happily. And, uh, you know, just jumping right into it. I mean, that's probably the biggest change, obviously. Um, you know, so the deal happened this year. Uh, it closed February. And, you know, mainly we're going to be talking about what we've been doing. And the meat of all this, of course, is product and demos. So I'll try and get through the slide and sort of the high-level talk really quickly. But really, the first thing that I just want to quickly cover for everyone is why, why the deal, right? Why from Nianza's perspective and why from VMware's perspective? And really, the big thing, the benefit that both sides saw was the fact that SD-WAN as sort of a networking technology plus AI ops covering sort of client experience and client behavior up through the branch and campus and into the WAN sort of make, you know, sort of an end-to-end -end picture that's far more valuable than e either of these pieces independently. And I'll talk about that sort of going forward. But, you know, if, if you're not familiar, I know, of course, this is Mobility Field Day. And if you're not familiar with SD-WAN, of course, one of the big things is also, if you've noticed in the news recently, all the big infrastructure players that have, you know, wireless solutions, as an example, or stuff in the branches, branch and campus, have been acquiring SD-WAN solutions. And so this is kind of part and parcel of, you know, everything that we're about to talk about as well. So HPE acquiring Silverpeak, of course, Cisco and Viptela from a little while ago, uh, Palo Alto Networks and CloudGenix, right? And so this is all sort of recognizing the fact that SD-WAN sits in a very strategic place in the network that sort of covers getting from your client to containers and applications in the, in the cloud. So that's that. I'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, the next big thing, obviously, that's changed is we're all working from home. Uh, COVID has thrown a wrinkle in all our, or a wrench maybe, <laughs> in all of our lives. And, you know, while the branch and campus are still really critical, especially in certain verticals, um, most of us are working from home and really the home network is a new enterprise edge. And we'll talk about some of the stuff we've been working on to handle that case as well. And then last thing I just wanted to quickly cover is the fact that the original Nyansa vision of being multi-vendor is continuing. VMware, by very nature of, of what we sell, we don't sell every single infrastructure networking element uh, up, up and down the stack. So we are multi-vendor and the plan for the Nyansa technology is to remain multi-vendor. And one of the things we'll talk about also is some of the new vendors that we are supporting now as well and some of the ways that we'll support even more. Okay. So just giving you guys a really quick high level vision of VMware, the company that, that we're now part of and sort of how it fits in. Um, this is the vision as articulated by our CEO, Pat uh, Gelsinger. And really it's about VMware's vision is any device, whether it's a you know, user device, laptop, phone, tablet, or an IoT device, um, an infusion pump, point of sale device, whatever have you, connecting to any application, regardless of how it's deployed, whether it's a VM, container, third-party SaaS application, whatever, in any cloud, right? Um, whether it's public cloud, you know, edge computing, of course, is becoming big, you know, hybrid cloud deployments and so on, uh, to enable and facilitate this kind of communication. And obviously, the big thing sitting in the middle, the glue of all this is the network both from the SD-WAN side, but as well as the campus and branch network as well, um, the access network. And so speaking of the SD-WAN network, um, just a quick note on sort of SD-WAN technology and sort of how, and, and, and how the Nyansa technology really fits in. So this is a picture, you know, an SD-WAN network, um, you know, just, just to sort of quickly, you know, cover this. It's basically a replacement for your edge router except now it's software defined, which makes it awesome. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, over here, you know, you replace your edge router in your branch or campus or home, right, with an SD-WAN router. And basically it enables programmability and flexibility and agility and the ability to utilize all of the internet links uh, in an intelligent way. But the, one of the unique aspects of VMware's VeloCloud SD-WAN is the fact that we have these cloud gateways, which are actually just a subscription service. So they provide sort of an optimized on-ramp to cloud applications, 
right? So they're deployed across the world. Um, they are co-located in a lot of ways to uh, critical applications like Microsoft Office 365 and Box and Ring Central and so on, Zoom as well. And they provide sort of this, obviously, greatly simplifying VPN and things like that. So it provides a very flexible, programmable, agile, and optimized network. Um, that's, that's sort of the SD-WAN technology. And one of the big areas of you know, cross-benefit between the two companies is the fact that you know, when we deploy Nyanza, the Nyanza AI Ops platform, one of the points of friction was the fact that we have to collect data. And so we needed to deploy a crawler sitting within an enterprise branch or campus to collect some of that packet data, as an example. Well, VeloCloud Edge routers or uh, VeloCloud Edges already are in the branch and campus and have that footprint. And so one of the big, you know, the, the first integration points, which sort of make the most sense, and we'll be announcing this at VMworld coming up, is the fact that now you don't need a crawler if you have SD-WAN. Of course, if you don't have VeloCloud SD-WAN, then the crawler technology still works. Or if you want to collect additional data from like east-west uh, traffic and things like that, you can still do that. But if you do have VeloCloud, you don't need to deploy crawlers anymore. You just sort of flip on the technology and we automatically start bringing the same kind of analytics um, to your SD-WAN network. Um, and then lastly, sort of there's a management layer on top of all this. And that's sort of gonna be another integration point as we go. So this slide sort of talks about kind of the overall picture and the overall vision. And this should be pretty like familiar in terms of the way Neonsa technology has worked in the past. It all starts from the client devices at the left. And really we try and collect data about every single client device in the network and run machine learning and AI on top of that data like we've been doing um, to glean insights, recommendations, automatically learn baselines and all of that stuff. But one of the big integrated value propositions with um, VMware VeloCloud SD-WAN is going to be actually turning around and programming the network to enable self-healing networks uh, from the SD-WAN side of things. And this is something that's come up in past presentations. Hey, do you guys turn around and take action? And the answer has always been, you know, as we sort of integrate closer with an infrastructure partner, then that's going to become a reality. Um, and obviously we're as close as we're gonna get with any infrastructure partner now, um, what, that being VMware VeloCloud. And so the last step and the, the big vision of all this is to get to self-healing networks where the Nyansa AI Ops platform analyzes all this data continually for, about client devices and their experience and turns around and actually programs a network. So, okay, so that's, that's all sort of say at the high level Next, I'm going to kind of switch gears, and then after that, I'll, I'll hand off to John. Um, and so switching gears over to the actual product, which is probably the thing that everyone is really here to, to hear, as opposed to me blathering along or blathering on high level. Um, from a product standpoint, we've been sort of very busy, of course. Um, and here are some of the highlights of what we've uh, added to the platform. So one of those is adding a dashboard for critical devices in the environment. So we actually have a dashboard that allows folks to label critical IoT devices. So in healthcare, infusion pumps, MRI machines, and so on. In retail, your point of sale device or your barcode scanners and things like that. And just have dashboards in the product and alerts as well that just monitor those devices, both from a performance as well as a behavioral aspect. We also introduced a new service desk dashboard and John's actually gonna demo this as well, which is sort of a simplified view for service uh, for tier one service folks. I remember a couple of years ago, or maybe it was last year, Lee um, you know, had said, hey, there's no way I'm showing voyance to <laughs> my, my help desk, which were students at the time, probably still are. Um, and so we'll, we'll see if maybe this, this gets closer to you know, Lee being okay showing that. Um, we've also added support for more wireless vendors, Mist being one of them, uh, Extreme Wing 5, um, as well as Meraki is a work in progress, as well as uh, other Extreme platforms as well. Um, we've added in improvements to the floor maps and the product. That was one of the big requests from customers so that they could replace some of the legacy NMS stuff that they have. That's a work in progress. Um, We've really expanded the, the data platform, both from an ingestion as well as APIs sort of to extract data from the platform as well. From an ingestion standpoint, one of the things we've done is we've made it easier to integrate 
third party uh, data into the platform. And one really important piece of data that we just added to the platform is Zoom data. And I'll be demoing that later on. Um, and then another sort of initiative from uh, what do you call it? data export aspect is working with Splunk to actually solve some contact tracing use cases that John will talk about later as well. And then finally, this will also demo, it's actually collecting data directly from the device itself. So expanding what we start out as a client agent to an actual application that allows you to sort of diagnose what's going on in your client device and also send data back to the back end as another data source.